men can be helped by God. Say amen. amen. Businessmen can be helped by God. Men of God can be helped by God. And that when you look at a life and destiny that has obtained help from God versus a life that is running in the strength of the flesh, the difference is as clear as east to west. You are about to experience a transformative journey with Apostle Joshua Selma in this powerful sermon. This profound teaching will deepen your understanding of faith, purpose, and spiritual growth. Get ready for a soul-stirring encounter that will inspire and empower you. Please listen very carefully. You are as powerful as the men that God puts around your life to support your journey to greatness. I have told you, if God says yes, and in this world of men, men say no, your yes remains in the realm of the spirit. All blessings come from God through men to men. All destructions come from Satan through men to men. In any case, men are the prophetic midwives that can help people to actualize destiny or otherwise. Are you understanding me? The Bible talks about a very strange man in the Bible called Mephibosheth. Have you heard of that man? The man did not commit any crime. His only mistake no not a mistake his predicament was because of the carelessness of a midwife that was it and he became crippled for the rest of his life the woman sent to help the safe delivery for whatever reason she made a mistake the bible notes her mistake the mistake of a midwife crippled a man with the potential for a great destiny for life the mistake of a midwife someone say man it's important for you to know how god answers your prayer the moment you pray and ask god start looking around men are like trays in the spirit they come with a buffet of possibilities you need to have that discernment men are powerful the psalmist was contemplating this and he said what is man i would quote it this way what is in man lord what did you hide in man that even man is not aware of men are a compendium of possibilities when you see them come god hides his anointing in men he hides his wisdom in men did your bible not say there is this treasure but that it is hidden in earthen vessels do not forget this teaching that when god wants to help a man to rise to the place of destiny number one he grants you access to his mercy number two gift of men are you ready for number three the third way that god helps men is by the ministry of the holy spirit he is called the helper and i just want to talk for a few minutes here and then we'll wrap up dr andy just began to discuss that so intelligently and powerfully i was so blessed in my spirit i said he, he's already begun the decision the holy spirit the bible calls him the helper the helper he's many things but my my interest as far as this discussion tonight is concerned is the holy spirit as helper second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5 apostle paul is mentoring the church in corinth and here's what he said not that we are sufficient of ourselves is that your bible i already explained to you that the word sufficiency means the ability to to have capacity always rising to the occasion never disappointing he's saying when you see us always meeting up standards it's not because we have an intrinsic ability as such he says our sufficiency is of god that means the the factor in our lives that seem to make us invincible is our partnership our partnership with god the bible says next verse verse 6 it says who have made us able ministers able ministers able ministers hallelujah jesus began to talk about the holy spirit in fact before i get there in ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 apostle paul is 
teaching the disciples and then when he's done with all his discussion now theologically speaking it is believed that the book of ephesians contains about the most balanced exegesis of the entire believer's journey are we together because paul intelligently enters the believers in ephesus from verse 1 and 2 he reveals to them their position on account of the finished work of christ then he helps them to understand the dynamics of walking worthy of their call then he teaches them how to stand against the wiles of the enemy are we together now now when we get to verse 6 he says finally in conclusion haven't taught you all the other matters of the kingdom he said my brethren be strong in the lord be strong in the lord and in the power of his might please give us amplified if we can find that very quickly amplified says draw your strength from your union with him finally brethren it says in conclusion be strong in the lord be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which is boundless might provides be strong in the lord and in the power of his might be strong in the lord hallelujah praise the name of the lord so romans chapter 8 and verse 26 let me take it from where um pastor Edos, while he was teaching here he said likewise that means similarly as in the the pretext before this in that same vein the spirit helpeth do you see the word there the spirit helpeth our infirmity the word infirmity there is not the word sickness it's not related to sickness in this context at all the word infirmity there is bodily limitation the limitation that come to us by reason of wearing a mortal body he's saying unassisted by there are limitations for instance we know in part and we prophesy in part it's a limitation hallelujah but the bible says the spirit helpeth our infirmity that the holy spirit can provide a leverage an advantage to the believer and the bible calls it help how does the holy spirit help the believer can i run through the list very quickly number one the holy spirit according to scripture helps the believer by revealing the mind or will of god to the believer it is important you know this in this kingdom the will of god is very important you only succeed to the degree to which your life gravitates towards the will lord in fact the assignment the jurisdiction of the power of god the administration of the power of god is to bring all things into the will of god did you know that the assignment of the anointing is to bring every anomaly in your life into the will of god so for the anointing to work it has to vet what dimension of your life is inconsistent with the will of god and then it exerts a force an energy that brings your life to the will of god the end point of the manifestation of the power of god is that you walk entire in the will of god if you understand that say amen in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae. Please give us that scripture. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Here's what he says. For this cause also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, he says, and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Is that in your Bible? It was the desire of Paul that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will lo i come in the volume of the book he says to do your will jesus found from scripture where it was written concerning him the bible says it was given him the scroll of Isaiah, luke chapter 4 and he stood up for to read and he began to chant the messianic prophecy and he closed the book and said this day is this scripture fulfilled they fastened their eyes on him and he began to walk wonders and miracles someone say the will of god one more time say the will of god hallelujah this is very very powerful in first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10 still speaking about the will of god the bible says 
no eye has seen no ear has heard what god has prepared to install or has installed for them that love him but hallelujah but under normal circumstances it is too deep too high too vast but next verse verse um 10 now please go to verse 10 go to verse 10 but god had revealed them to us how by his spirit because the holy spirit has the unique advantage of searching all things including the deep things of god that means the holy spirit is able to search the mind of the father and to reveal to you the blueprints per time per season it's a risk to assume a path and believe that that was the path air marked for you because the bible says there is a way that seemed right unto a man it says but the end thereof are the ways of destruction the holy spirit reveals the will of god we had a little tour of your beautiful facility after the service and i listened to pastor as he shared you know i like to hear the stories of men how this came about and the summary of everything was the the mastery of hearing god and dr andy taught us again very powerfully walking in the will of god provided you are in the will of god there is immunity when you walk in the will of god you are at risk when you are outside the will of god the jealousy of god is mandated to defend you within the jurisdiction of his will do you understand this the will of god it is the assignment of the holy spirit in partnership with the word god to make known to the believer the will of god the will of god the will of God number two the Holy Spirit helps the believer by providing direction and guidance direction and guidance this is very powerful John chapter 16 reading from 12 and 13 John 16 12 and 13 Jesus said I have many things I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now do you know the many things he had to tell them those were the things that were revealed by Paul imagine the gospel without the epistles we would never even there was no mention of our position in Christ the implication of the realities of redemption the gospel is the foundation for our understanding but the Pauline epistle gives us clarity and perspective it was Paul that began to help the believer understand giving us a sound exegesis of the the implication of the death burial and resurrection of Jesus to the believer it was Paul who mentored us to understand the dynamics of walking in the spirit it was him who arranged methodically the operation of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer the assignment of Paul was to be used by the Spirit to bring the many things Jesus wanted to tell them but they could not bear because the Holy Spirit was not in them are we together now I have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now I love the next verse how be it when he the Spirit of truth is come my Bible says he shall guide you into all truth say all truth not some truth all truth very instructive statement here just because you are around truth does not mean it will bless you you must be guided because the devil can use truth to destroy i hope you know truth is like a knife it depends on how you use it when satan came to tempt jesus temptation two and three was based on it is sin it is written shall keep his changes charge over you they shall bear thee up on their way lest you dash your feet against a stone it is written hallelujah the holy spirit guides you in all truth remember in acts chapter 16 if you are bible students the bible talks about a damsel who was prophesying accurately all it under the spirit of divination and that by that prophet she brought great gains if you were following the correctness or the accuracy of the speech she got it right these were holy men of god but it was by the influence of divination it's a familiar spirit when the spirit of truth is come he will guide 
he will guide you many things that look right he will still guide you he will activate your organs of interacting with the realm of the spirit so that for a reason you cannot explain a proposal can be all excellent but you will still be constrained to go for it and you do not even know why the guidance of the spirit leading you through the paths of life and your destiny will continue to spell excellence in ways that even you cannot explain because you have submitted to the guidance of the holy spirit let me tell you what it means to guide and to direct they are not the same thing to direct means to show you the path that leads to your destination to guide means to show you the steps that leads to your destination so if i'm to direct you out of this auditorium i will say go there is a door there if i see well there is another door there go and turn left that is direction not guidance if i'm guiding you i will let you know that there is a depression here you may fall even though looking at the right direction so the assignment of guidance is to play the understanding for the steps to take while direction forces on the destination guidance focuses on the process and the holy spirit both directs and guides hmm. is someone learning most of us have opened up our spirits to be directed but not to be guided so we say i know what god has said that by the end of this year this is what i will become but do you understand the dynamics of your daily walk that eventually leads you to that prophecy the holy spirit provides guidance holy spirit provide guidance the holy spirit provides guidance the holy spirit guides number three how does the holy spirit help men the ministry of empowerment it is exclusively within the office of the spirit to empower the giver. now there are two dimensions of grace that the bible teaches the first is called saving grace the grace of god that bringeth men to salvation are we together has appeared unto all men that dimension of grace appears to all men and you do not grow in that dimension of grace because the assignment is to sponsor administering the life of god to you and once that happens it's exhausted its validity in your life the second level of grace is called enabling grace philippians 4 13 i can do all things that is a very very arrogant statement how does a man stand to say i can do all things do you know how many things there are to be done in your lifetime and yet he says i can do all things but he says through christ through christ that strengthens me through christ that strengthens me there is an enabling grace thrice paul besought the lord over the thorn in his flesh and god's reply to him was my grace is sufficient are we together so you do the doing but the empowerment comes from the spirit extraordinary manifestations by the power of the holy spirit how does a man use the jawbone of a donkey and would single-handedly slay three thousand philistines he did the fighting but the empowerment was of the spirit is someone learning now so the holy spirit empowers us he brings us into maturity he helps us by the spirit to walk in power supernatural power power is so important that the bible is not silent as to the fact that believers need to be empowered jesus for three and a half years had mentored the disciple and transferred sufficient knowledge but he still told them tarry until ye be endued with power from on high when jesus resurrected he called the disciples to continue the final phase of his lectures before his ascension to heaven hallelujah and when he began to teach them in acts to one because you see their idea was that jesus was going to come and restore the nation of israel as we know that happened in the 1940s historically they thought that that would happen within that time that was why they were negotiating posi political positions for themselves they left fishing not because they wanted to go to heaven or they wanted to be apostles they 
were hoping that by working with jesus they would earn a very comfortable position when he's finally done with caesar and all of these people now jesus told them he was going that was why they were angry going to where to leave us you cause trouble we are, we are enemies we don't have families again you are not it was not compassion they were not missing he were angry we left everything to do and now you cause chaos all around rome and you said you're going peter said you are not going anywhere you're not going that was why when they came to catch jesus and he gave himself they were disappointed they expect to shake them off walk through them and he gave himself peter ran away when jesus died he was disappointed managing his disappointment in john 21 he said i go a fishing and the disciples said we go with you it's in your bible <laughs> i go off in let me go back and do what i was doing for three years before this man deceived me i hope you know peter had a wife he had responsibilities so jesus comes to them in john 21 and peter in his frustration ah listen there are times where everything is right but minus god you will still fail look at peter at sea remember he returned back in anger to fish the boat was there the skill was there the net was there the sea was there even the fish was there but he could not catch it there are times that every parameter is right your skill is there the boat is there the net is there the experience the fish he was looking for was there but he could not catch it here comes jesus little children have you any catch and he looked not knowing it was jesus he said cast your net to the right side this is jesus now and the bible says when he casted the net they could not leave the net because he was about to break and peter was washing himself he realized it was jesus and he said depart from me for i'm a sinner and jesus said no that's not the issue come simon but jonah lovest thou me more than this he said feed my lamb and then the discussion continued peter was so broken by by that encounter the same peter when the holy ghost came in acts chapter 2 they thought that these men were drunk now there was no time to run away he said calm down let me preach this is that that prophet joel said and from joel to david he began the same man who was running away confused but when power came upon him by the ministry of the holy spirit are we together now when he began to speak he rounded up his psalm by saying let it be known to you that this same jesus whom you have crucified has now been exalted as lord and christ the effect the bible says they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what shall we do it says repent for the remission of your sins and then you shall receive of this promise for the promise is unto you your children your children's children as many as are far off even those that the lord will call three thousand people came and the ministry the same peter the bible says handkerchiefs and aprons look at this guy the, the shadow of peter all the extraordinary manifestations by the spirit weak men become strong when they are with the holy ghost you see let me tell you the truth jesus said the holy ghost is with you and shall be in you it's important you understand and dr andy explained it so powerfully union and partnership are we together now yes that union is a state it's a spiritual reality when you are in christ but your partnership requires the active participation of your will continually and consistently it takes partnership with him to change your thoughts and like pastor taught us there are three indices according to scripture that describe the maturity of the believer you find that in first corinthians 13 and verse 11 when i was a child he said i spoke like a child i understood like a child i thought like a child he says but now that i am a man i lay aside these childish things childish speaking childish thinking childish understanding hallelujah praise the name of the lord then he begins to guide you then he empowers you ladies and gentlemen let me tell you sincerely when the holy spirit comes 
in and upon a believer even in his power your life becomes a sign and a wonder as we conclude this enlightening sermon by apostle joshua selman let the depth of knowledge shared today be a catalyst of your ongoing educational journey apply the principles of wisdom understanding and divine insight in your pursuit of knowledge remember ed education is not mainly about information but a transformation of the mind and spirit carry the touch of learning into your studies professions and daily life may you continually grow in wisdom and impart your spheres of influence positively go forth empowered to be a beacon of knowledge and light and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe so you can be the first to get our video god bless you see you in the next